Good morning, church. Welcome. Welcome to everyone here. Welcome to those online. Uh, we're going to call you into worship this morning with a beautiful song, O oh, Come to the Altar. Let's stand together.
you for being in this place. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. Thank you that you make the way open for us to come to you and we have forgiveness. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And at this point, we're going to welcome the children up for family worship. We're going to sing My Lighthouse. everybody. Welcome to our service of worship this morning. Wow, that was a really awesome way to start our service. Hey, everybody excited? Okay, a couple of people are excited, and Brian, <laughs> yay. <laughs> okay, what an awesome song though, hey? He's going to lead us safely to shore. Those are beautiful words. What a promise for us. Here's our lighthouse. Here's the light. Right, so welcome to our service. If you're visiting, you're in the right place today. If you're joining us online, it's really good to see you. Number of people to welcome this morning. Sure, so many people that are visiting. First of all, I'm just going to kind of mention you guys, but you're going to you're going to come talk to us in a moment, Arthur. Anyway, so um, but Arthur, Hilda, David, they are from the Gideons. Everybody know what the Gideons are? Okay, you're going to have to 
teach some people, okay. Uh, but we're going to hear about the Gideons in a little while, and then, um, so welcome you guys. There's a number of other people that are visiting. Who else is visiting this morning? I've met some people. I didn't meet you. I'm so sorry I did meet you. Yes, yes, okay. Wow, right over there. So many folk. So, yes, okay. So, you get a free cappuccino in the coffee shop. I know some people have had one already, but if you visit us, we give you a free cappuccino, and we have a gift for you after the service. So go to the welcome corner after the service, and uh, yeah, redeem your voucher. If you didn't get a voucher, just say, I'm brand new. Please can I have a coffee. It'll happen anyway. There's some people that will love you there and uh, give you a gift. So welcome. Um, dum, 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 dum. 28th of this month is the Comrades Marathon. We can't meet as a church because this whole road is blocked off, but we take advantage of that moment. We set up a big truck. We put our worship team on the truck. We have our jumping castle and our coffee machine out there, and we celebrate for four and a half hours as the runners come through. If you want to be a part of the action from the night before, we camp out here at the church because we can't really get to the church the next morning. Uh, but yeah, join us for the camp out, the bra, the crazy night, the early morning, the setup in the cold, I mean, the awesome setup, and then waiting for the runners and cheering the runners, and ah, it's such an awesome moment, praying for the people, might pray for some runners, but we really encourage people, and we're just a part of what's happening. We decided many years ago when we couldn't have church, we weren't going to stop uh, on a Sunday. So we do that every year when the comrades happen, so come and join us. And you say, if you're not going to sleep over, just wander down the road and come and say hi during the morning. Lots of time. Then on the 4th of September, we're having our spring picnic. Woo! So I, I was in a church where, where there was some, some people who were more mature, and we used to call this, it wasn't called a spring picnic. It was called the spring bonnet. And then I got flack from some people that you can't, call it that. The men could have decorated their bonnets for the day, though. I mean, let's be totally honest. It would have been great. But it, it, the spring bonnet was that you would wear a spring hat. So there's a competition running that day. So the, the picnic will happen after church. Come to church on the 4th, have an awesome service, and we're going to picnic. We'll set up the jumping castle, and we'll picnic out in the grass, bring something to snack on, to eat on, and then we're going to have two competitions running, and the proceeds will go to the coffee shop, which is No, secretly in my heart, I'm saying, thank you. But I'm not allowed to say it. Okay, but it's a spring hat. Are the men allowed to enter the spring hat? Oh, wow, I can't wait. Somebody promised me a hat made out of doilies. So, hey, might be a photo opportunity, just saying. So that's on the fourth. Right, two things that we're going to do at this point. We've got two things to do. We've got, I'm going to ask Arthur to come and join me. Arthur's, uh, whoa, okay, this one. Arthur's going to tell us about the Gideons and the awesome work that they do, and then straight off to Arthur, I'm going to ask JJ to come up. So Principal grumbled. <coughs> Why do these men want to give Bibles to children? It's just nonsense. Two Gideon members. So the school principal had grumbled and said, why do these men want to give Bibles to the children? That's just nonsense. Two members were visiting a school in the rural areas of Bender. So the principal addressed himself to the children. What do you use the Bibles for? A girl of 14 stood up and said, I have the Lord Jesus in my life, this little Bible brings me closer to him, teaches me more about him. The distribution went forward. Two years later, the same two men uh, visited the school. As they approached, something looked different. There was a large inscription uh, visible as they arrived. We love our Lord, it says. Jesus had become king of this school. The Gideons were warmly received. And the principal, he was a different person. He had received the Lord Jesus as his saviour through reading the word that had been given to him. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Good to be here. My first time in this place. Gideon's is an association of Christian businessmen and professional men seek to share our faith 
by personal witness and by placing and distributing the word of God in what we call the traffic lanes of life. And these include hotel rooms, which is how it all began, hospital wards, secondary schools, as well as prisons and one or two other areas. The outreach work began in the early 1900s in the United States is now established in over 200 countries. Not all of those enjoy the freedom of access that we have here. Gideons were active in Vietnam, for example, until interrupted by the war in 1975. We praise the Lord that in 2008 the Gideons were able to restart that work with seven new members at that time in Ho Chi Minh City, better known to us as Saigon. The wives of the Gideons are part of the organization if each wife, uh, if they decide to join, and they have specific tasks. They place the New Testaments in medical waiting rooms. They give copies to nursing staff, the hospitals, and uh, in training, and to female inmates of the prisons. And they also have a prayer support role. Uh, the <coughs> roll-up screen that I have at the front um, there is the Gideon's emblem, uh, the, the torch uh, relating to Gideon's story, and then <coughs> the ladies' one is the same with the surround of, of the lilies. But that is a little outdated. We need to update that. They're called the Gideon's Auxiliary. Uh, we don't use that term anymore. Uh, it relates to military history and days. They're now the wives of the Gideons. We do hear from some of those whose lives have been touched, by reading the scriptures, but there are many others of whom we will not know. God said through Isaiah, chapter 55 and verse 11, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void or empty. It shall accomplish that which I purpose and prosper in the thing for which I sent it. Some of our members were returning from distributing Bibles at a school in the Coxstadt area. It had been snowing and the road was in a poor condition. The road was difficult. The SUV's engine failed and then refused to start the side of the road. This was close to a police station, <coughs> so they went there to look for help. While they were still waiting for um, a tow truck or maybe a mechanic, they gave New Testaments to the officers there and uh, spoke to them about its contents. After that... Well, they tried again while still waiting and the engine started and after that no fault was found with the engine. They concluded that those men and women needed the word of God that day. We visit Westville Prison once a year. We've not been able to do that uh, in the last couple of years. We hope and plan to uh, go there again. We normally spend a Saturday morning, take a team, and uh, we go to the awaiting trial prisoners and... Uh, able to speak to them and to give them copies of the New Testament in various languages. And this is always a humbling experience. I think of the prodigal son of Jesus' parable. There came a time when he began to be in want and no one gave him anything. And we are able to give them copies of the precious word of God. The Gideons are all members of local churches and we need your support to be effective. We ask for your help in three ways. First, will you pray for us? You pray that the Holy Spirit will continue to use the scriptures that are placed and are still in circulation to bring salvation and healing and understanding to the readers. Secondly, we do need manpower and woman power. I became a member in the 1980s and I have found this fellowship and its activities a source of great blessing in my own walk with the Lord. We in the greater Pantown area, we call ourselves the Pantown Camp. It's the whole of inner and outer west. And we need a few new members to be really effective. And possibly some younger members, as the Lord wills. <coughs> Speak to us if you may be interested. We will give you details. <coughs> Finally, we need financial support for the purchase of the Bibles. South Africa is one of the self-supporting countries of those 200, so we're able to meet our own needs from our 
our own resources, uh, uh, gifts from friends, churches, and so on. And from time to time, we can reach out to maybe a neighboring country, maybe somewhere else <coughs> uh, with scriptures where they may have the manpower, but not necessarily the financial resources to purchase those Bibles. Um, remembering that Jordan Church's needs come first, any contributions are, of course, most welcome. And if you're able to make a regular donation, our banking details <coughs> are available. A fairly recent initiative is what we call Friends of the Gideons. We find that there are some who are keen to support the work but do not feel to be called to become full-time members, uh, perhaps uh, very committed or overcommitted time-wise. As a friend, you can pray for us and then you would receive our regular newsletter and can pray in a more informed way. If in addition you make regular donations as a financial friend, then we will supply you with a limited number of New Testaments uh, on an ongoing basis to distribute at your discretion. Friends of the Gideons can apply to an individual, a group, or even a whole church. Uh, we have a leaflet with the details. There's also this little card. If you know this scan, well, you can do it straight away, or you can enter your name there and let us know. So take one of those if you wish. Shakina Mulder, living in Indonesia, so to conclude, uh, Johannesburg was raised as an Orthodox Muslim. Through a visit to a neighbor's house, her mother heard the gospel from visiting missionaries there and was converted. Shakina saw a dramatic change in her mother. At first, this caused a rift between them, but the Christian gospel proved irresistible. And at age 16, she responded to a call by a visiting uh, speaker, a missionary at her school. And she, yeah, responded. This was not an easy step to take, believing that all she had taught and believed over those years was not true, let me say, not the way, the truth, the life as we know it. Shortly afterwards, the Gideons visited the school and she received her first New Testament. Some years later, after she married an Afrikaner, she asked to be baptized by immersion. Uh, Shakina spoke to us at our national convention a couple of years ago in Durban. We have the full uh, testimony recorded. Uh, it's just a little long for most purposes. <coughs> she asked to be baptized by immersion, which is what she had seen on uh, radio pulpits, TV broadcasts at home. A Dutch Reformed Church in Pretoria agreed, although that is not their practice. And so for that baptism, they brought a jacuzzi into the church. That morning, the place was full. As she came up, uh, stood up out of the water, Shakina raised her arms and many cameras clicked. The next morning, that picture was on the cover of Die Bild newspaper <laughs> with this headline, Bekeerde Muslim Macy wordt onder dompel in die Eche Kerk. Converted Muslim girl is immersed in the DRC. Thank you, Pastor Brian, uh, for giving us this time. Thank you all for your attention, and may our Lord continue to richly bless you here. Thank you. Morning, church. Um, so when the, when the chairman comes and stands in front of you, people start say, thinking, he's going to ask us for more money. <laughs> um, I'm not going to do that this morning. I am going to ask you to prayerfully consider your contributions, and we thank you for your contributions. It's been, it's been wonderful being able to continue doing God's work throughout COVID. We've been able to have an online presence by God's grace, and that's only because of the members of this church, and for that we are so thankful. Um, as board, we, we work behind the scenes, and that's why I don't like standing here this morning, because we prefer to be behind the scenes. We, we like to do things in the back. We look after the church finances. We look after the building, after the mans, and, and that's how we like it. We don't like it when, when the camera is on us and when 
standing in the front here, and yeah, so now I'm waffling because I'm nervous. But uh, <laughs> I, I just, we, we had a meeting, and you know, as an as a, as a active member of board, you serve for a period of time, um, and when your season is over, you step down, and somebody else picks up the reins, and so you rotate members as time goes along. And it all happens, and it just looks after itself. But I had a strong conviction um, recently that, you know, we need to give thanks to those members who so faithfully served year after year. There's members who served for two or three terms, members who were ready to stand down but had to f- were forced to stay on because we didn't have somebody else to pick up the flag and w- run with the banner. Um, and, and I just had a conviction that, you know what, um, let's just as a church give thanks to those who serve selflessly, who gives of their time, their weekends, their evenings when the alarm goes off and all that sort of stuff to come and serve ultimately God and the church. And our recent member that stepped down is Dave Pringle. And Dave, I'm going to call you up where you are here this morning. Dave, if you, can, if you don't mind coming up, I'm also going to call some of the other board members who's here this morning to please just join me. We want to praise the church for Dave um, and thank him for his service. His term has come to an end. And, and we grant him that. We, we, we loved working with this man. He's been, a, he's been an awesome chap to work with. Thank you. It's been an absolute honor. It's been an absolute pleasure. Always willing hands to come and help. Always willing to come and advise and just support the church in his time. And his time is not over. He's still helping us. He's still cleaning our trestle tables for us, fixing our tables and doing bits and bobs. But we allow you to rest now. <laughs> and we just as a church want to pray with you. So let's bow our heads. Father God, we just, we just thank you and we worship and we praise your holy name. We are so thankful that as a church we can stand here this morning and honor this man who's faithfully served you, who's faith, faithfully given of his time and his skills to honor your name, Lord Jesus. And so this morning, as a church and as fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, we pray over day. We pray for you. We pray for your family. For Elaine, we pray that, God, that you would just bless them abundantly. We pray, Father God, that you will give them good health and that he will know that we love him. We appreciate the support he's given us and still giving us. But uh, we pray that as you take time to rest and recover, that you find what God is calling you into next and where else he wishes for you to serve. So thank you, Lord Jesus, that as a church, as brothers and sisters in Christ, we can stand here this morning and honor Dave in Jesus' name. Amen. I'd like to invite you to bring your tithes and offerings at this point in the service. There's a box right at that pillar there if you'd like to drop your tithes and offerings into that box. We don't send bags around since COVID. There are QR codes, and if you're online, you will see our banking details and a QR code as well. Let's bring our tithes and offerings. I think the AV person was hoping that if he played that tune twice, I don't know, that maybe people would go twice. I don't know. Let's give thanks. Let's pray. Almighty God and Heavenly Father, we worship you. What an honor and a privilege to gather in your name in this place. You're the one true God. You're the Alpha and the Omega. You're the beginning and the end. You are love. You're grace. You're holy. You are our Father. You're our friend. Thank you, Lord. What an honor and a privilege we serve you. Thank you for the Gideons, Lord. Thank you for their uh, unique role in your kingdom. 
Thank you for stewardship board and their service, Lord. Thank you for those that serve you here and in other churches. Thank you, Lord, that you speak to each person's heart, that you call people to a place of service, and that that is what the kingdom of God is about. Thank you, Lord, for tithes and offerings. Thank you for blessing us. You are a good God and you love us. I pray for these tithes and offerings. In Jesus' name, amen. As we go into worship, a lot of our songs are about trusting God today and um, drawing close to him. Even this first song, This Beating Heart, it's a funky, fast song, but it's really, if you think about, consider the words, we need our hearts to beat with God's heart. We need to be aligned with him, get our sustenance from him, and let him sustain us. I love the scripture that I found in uh, Jeremiah, where it talks about to be planted by the streams of water, that even when drought comes, your roots are deep um, near the stream, and that you will be sustained. Jeremiah 17, 7 to 8. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose trust is in the Lord. He is like a tree planted by water that sends out its roots by the stream and does not fear when heat comes, for its leaves remain green and is not anxious in the year of drought, for it does not cease to bear fruit. And that's what we want. We want to be sustained by the Lord. So let's remember that as we sing um, this beating heart, let's stand together. Something inside of me knows there is surely more than this. All around us Something inside of me No there is surely more than this Echoes of eternity All around us There's music within my soul More than the flesh and bones I know Whispers of eternity Deep inside us The beating heart like a drum It'll beat for you This heart like a drum
built on nothing less. glad in him because we trust in his holy name. Let your steadfast love, O Lord, be upon us, even as we hope in him. We're going to sing that beautiful song, Healer. You hold my every moment. You calm my raging sea. You. 
seated. Our scripture this morning is Matthew 5, verse 13. This is the word of the Lord. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. For the last couple of weeks, when I have been preaching, um, when I have been here, surprise, it's me, I'm back. (laughs) I've been looking at the church and what the church is. I spoke about the body of Christ, that the body is made up of many parts, All parts are part of the same body, and all parts of the body are important, are valued, have a part to play. I spoke about the bride of Christ and how we are in a covenant relationship with Jesus Christ. We're not in a like a casual whatever relationship. We step into a covenant relationship as He is as we are the bride of Christ. We are called to submit to Him and we are called to love Him. Now another image that's used in the in the Bible when we come to what is the church, what does it look like, is the image of a lamp or a lamp stand. This is an image that we find in the book of Revelation quite a lot. Revelation 1, 19 and 20 says this, write therefore what you have seen. So this is God speaking to John. He says, write what you've seen. What is now and what will take place later? The mystery of the seven stars that you saw in my right hand and the seven golden lampstands is this. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven lampstands are the seven churches. So just a side note real quick, when I read these scriptures, I wonder if there are only angels assigned to the churches in the book of Revelation, or if all churches have got an angel. I know there's some angels sitting here, but I don't think that's what, what Jesus is speaking, or God's speaking about in this scripture. But I wonder if we have an angel. It's just like my, my, my musing. Okay. But the seven lampstands are the seven churches. It's a great picture of what the church is. The church is a place where light shines. It shines here, it shines out. So it really is a good picture. And we read this morning in the scripture, I read this morning, that we are the light of the world. So this connection between the church, our part to play, and the light. So we are the light of the world. The scripture says you are the light of the world, so we are the light of the world. The scripture is speaking to us this morning. We are light, we shine, and where do we shine? The world. Yeah, we think we're in the darkness, Uncle Peter. Yes, please. I love this man. Yes, we do. We shine out. Shine. It's, It's so difficult to stop light. I remember one holiday club, Oki was here, and he wanted to make this whole hall dark. It was going to be like a techno theme. Light sticks and flashing lights. But we had to cover every single window in this place. Before the screens were up, those were windows as well. Before this was here, there were two windows here. It's hard to stop the light. It really is. But when uh, the light shines, oh, there's power. So Jesus is speaking about himself in John 8, 12. He says this, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Jesus is saying he is the light. Then he says in John 1, 1 to 5, in the beginning, the beginning of the book of John, was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. Now we get it. Light shines in the darkness and darkness has not overcome it. So Jesus is the light. Jesus is the life. Life is light and light is Jesus. And so 
Jesus is the light. Now we read, we are the light. What does this mean? Who is the light? Do we share this podium as light bearers? No, he is the light living within us. It is his light that shines and radiates from us. We are not light without Jesus Christ. Without him, we are not light. As we accept him, as we step into his love and grace and mercy, and we say, Lord, be Lord of my life. Lead and guide me for the rest of my life. The light bulb comes on. We start to shine. We start to shine. And then the picture and revelation of the lampstand and the church is important to hold in mind because this scripture is speaking about us individually, but I believe it's also speaking to us collectively. The story I want to read for you this morning about shining as a church. It's called the Life Saving Station. On a dangerous sea coast where shipwrecks often occurred, there was once a crude little life saving station. The building was just a hut, and there was only one boat. But the few devoted members kept a constant watch over the sea. With no thought for themselves, they went out day and night, tirelessly searching for the lost. Some of those who were saved, and various others in the surrounding area, wanted to become associated with the life saving station and give of their time money, and effort for the support of its work. New boats were bought and new crews trained. The little life-saving station grew. Some of the members of the life-saving station were unhappy that the building was so crude and poorly equipped. They felt that a more comfortable place should be provided for those saved from the sea. They replaced the emergency cots with beds and put better furniture in the enlarged building. Now the life-saving station became a popular gathering place for its members, and they decorated it beautifully and furnished it exquisitely because they used it as a sort of club. Fewer members were now interested in going to sea on life-saving missions, so they hired crews to do their work. The life-saving station still prevailed in the club's decorations, and there was a liturgical lifeboat in the room where the club initiations were held. About this time, a large ship was wrecked off the coast, and the highest crew t higher crews brought in boatloads of cold, wet, and half-drowned people. They were dirty and sick. The beautiful new club was in chaos, so the property committee immediately had a shower house built outside the club, where victims of shipwrecks could be cleaned up before coming inside. At the next meeting, there was a split in the club membership. Most of the members wanted to stop the club's life-saving activities because they were unpleasant and a hindrance to the normal social life of the club. Some members insisted on life-saving as their primary purpose and pointed out that they were still called a life-saving station. But they were finally voted down and told that if they wanted to save the lives of all the various kinds of people who were shipwrecked in those waters, they could begin their own life-saving station down the coast. And so they did. As the years went by, the new life-saving station experienced the same challenges that had occurred in the old. It evolved into a club, and yet another life-saving station was founded. History continued to repeat itself, and if you visit the sea coast today, you'll find a number of exclusive clubs along the shore. Shipwrecks are frequent in those waters, but most of the people drown. We are the light of the world. Then we learn that we are a town built on a hill. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden, neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to, to everyone in the house. In the book of Revelation, this is the picture that we have, a lamp stand, a light shining. Each church of the seven churches, an angel and a light shining out. We have got a vision in this church. Our vision is to be a beacon of Jesus' light to the community by spreading his word, his love, and his care. Our kid's song was about the lighthouse and about being saved and being led home. So much that's happening here this morning that I'm hoping you're picking up on. But there's this moment where, um, where we need to say that vision, is that real? Is that the real thing for us? Are we really spreading his, his light? Are we a lighthouse for the community? Many years ago, 
I was at the, the final big Mighty Men conference that happened this way. Where did they happen? That's right. And um, on one of the evenings, there was a call from the stage that they had banners to give out. And they said, come and get a banner. And you know, we're South African. We love free stuff. So there weren't enough banners for, for the 45,000 people that were there because we all were like, we need the banner. Anyway, we came home bannerless. But it was a great conference. During that next week, two members of Hillside Church came to our church bearing a banner. And the banner spoke about being watchmen and gatekeepers. And they said, Brian, this banner is really for your church. We're number 1A Old Main Road. We are the first, first anything in Hillcrest. That side of the road is Gillett's. This side of the road is Hillcrest. We're not 1B. We're 1A. And affirmed, affirmed by Hillside Church, we have a part to play in this community. We are gatekeepers and watchmen of our community. Years and years ago, when this piece of property was bought, nobody realized what God was doing. Nobody said, oh, 30 years' time, this is going to be what's going to happen. We're going to be the first people here, and we're going to watch our community. Our vision and our position are critical. Our light has to shine. We're not under a bowl. We're on a hill. Hill, Chris. Okay, sorry, that's very cheesy. But we're on a hill. We're in a position, not by accident. No way. God has put us here for a reason, for a purpose. We need to press into that. So we are the light of the world. A town on a hill shouldn't be hidden. And then, shine before others. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. We are to shine like Christians. We are to shine before others. Somebody said this, preach the gospel at all times. Use words if necessary. Preach the gospel at all times. Use words if necessary. This speaks about what we're reading about this morning. The fact that people should see something in us. They should go, wait a second, there's something different about those people, or about that person. In 1 Peter 2 verse 12, we read this, live such good lives among the pagans that though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day he visits us. Live such good lives among the pagans that they see something in you that they would glorify God. Our lives shine his light and those who don't know Jesus should see our lives and want to be in that same place. Should be wanting to come here with you to go, I want to know what you know. I want to meet what you, who you've met. I want, to, I want to be a part of this thing. Our lives should draw people to Jesus Christ. Here's a warning really quickly. This is not an excuse to never mention the Jesus name. Okay, never to speak about Jesus Christ. Not an excuse for that. Because some people are like, yeah, I, I'm not an evangelist, so I'm not going to say anything. I'm just going to live, live a, a good life. But we do know in 2 Timothy 4 verse 2, preach the word, be prepared in season, out of season, correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. We do know we have to say things. Oh, by the way, the word preach there can also be interpreted as proclaim. So it's not just for Brian. The scripture's not for the pastor only. Okay, just checking. I don't want there to be any complications this morning. Light shines out. We're, we're lamps on a lampstand. This church is a lamp on a lampstand. 1A is our lampstand. And we're called to go. Light goes. We are called to go. Go and make disciples. The Great Commission. So as I was preparing for this morning, I, was rem I remembered a story from back in the day. I was in Polokwane. I was doing an a assembly, school assembly. I just got a, a phone. My first cell phone. I was one of, you know, a few. It was big. Battery lasted for about a week and a half had a small screen, I didn't need glasses, it was great. And then I went and did this assembly. And I'm busy addressing a whole school assembly and I hear my phone ringing over there by my bag. And I think, oh, this is just not good. 
out. And Alana was with me at this assembly, and she's sitting over there, and the phone stops. I'm like, oh, praise the Lord. She, she put the phone, she put it on silent or switched it off or something. I'm like, you're saved. And then it rings again. <laughs> the person who wanted to get me was super insistent. And Lana hadn't actually found my phone in all of my junk. But I thought, there's a moment where God interrupts us. And I really have a sense God's interrupting us this morning. He's saying, listen to my word this morning. You are light. Let your light shine. He's saying, stop. Just stop and think about this for a moment. So we're going we're gonna to sing a song because we're going to go to communion. That song is for us to prepare our hearts. And then we're going to go to communion. We're going to share communion together. But I'd like you to be preparing your hearts and thinking about some things about this morning. God's interrupting us for a, for a reason. We didn't sing that kid's song just by accident. We're hearing about the light. The, the Word of God takes that light. The Gideons take that light out. We're hearing about service. All of these things are pulling us to one place this morning. So as we prepare our hearts, think about some of these questions. Are we living as people of the light? Easy question. Yes or no? Does his light shine brightly from us? Are we shining his light? Is society or our community different because we are a lamp on a lampstand? Are we shining as a church? Are we a life-saving station or are we a club? We are the light of the world. Let your light shine. Let's sing our communion song. Prepare your hearts. Think about these things as we sing this song and as we come to the table. And then if you've got kids in Kids Zone that you want to have a part of the communion service, you're welcome to go and get them now. You may remain seated as we sing Calvary as you prepare your hearts for communion.
Let's pray. Let's give thanks. Almighty God and Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for this table. Thank you, Lord, that this table brings us together. This table unites us and also draws us close to you. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are real and alive and that you work in and through us today. And that as we celebrate this this communion, you are in it and that you work in our lives. Come, Holy Spirit, and work in a new way, we pray. Heal us, bless us, lead us, speak to us. Come, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Just checking that everybody has got a communion cup. (laughs) Everybody's good to go. Just before the service, one of the little people came to me and said, Brian, I love the blood in those cups. And so we love Jesus this morning, and so we partake in this meal of bread and juice. So let's remember what happened on that night. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. Drink of it whenever you do in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink from this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. And so we do the same this morning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Eat in remembrance of him. If you are struggling, just wave and a nimble-fingered person will help you. And then, for the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, drink in remembrance of Him. Let us pray. Let's give thanks. Thank you, Lord, for your table. Thank you, Lord, that you are the one who made this meal possible. Thank you, Lord, that you called us to do these things in remembering you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you gave up your life as a sacrifice that we could have life. Thank you, Lord, that you rose. Thank you, Lord, that you are in heaven, that you prepare a place for us. Holy Spirit, continue to work in and through us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's sing our closing song. We're going to close our service with a beautiful hymn, How Great Thou Art. Let's stand together. Oh, Lord, my God. When I hit on
don't forget to go and visit Arthur at the back there at the Gideon table. If you want prayer, our prayer room's just through here past the bookshelves. Receive the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you his peace. Amen. Go in peace.